Welcome back to our special edition of Battleground Alberta here on Sun News Network. I'm David Aiken, live from the Edmonton Expo Center uh, up in Edmonton's northeast. Uh, it's been a it's a loud event right now. The band's playing because Jim Prentice has been elected in a landslide to be the next leader of the Progressive Conservative Party of Alberta. And of course, that means he is going to be the next premier. He's got a whole lot of work to do. And I want to bring in Derek Fildebrandt now of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, Alberta chapter. And Derek, as you know, this was a campaign that hinged on governance, accountability, trust, ethics, a lot of areas where the CGF and you specifically have done some work. So give me your sense. You found a little bit of stuff out about Prentice that people might have been a bit unhappy about. But overall, where does Prentice stand on the trustometer? Can he rebuild the PC party? Well, I, I like nights like tonight because uh, I get to put on my pundit hat and, uh, you know, it, it's going to be incredibly difficult for anyone. I mean, these guys could have elected uh, the Buddha as their leader. People would have a hard time believing that, uh, that they're going to turn things around and, and actually be worthy of Alberta's, uh, Albertans' trust again. Uh, if there was a guy to do it, it was probably Jim Prentice. I think without him, the, the party was more or less signing an, uh, a self-inflicted death warrant. Uh, but, it, but it's difficult to tell. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who are just not going to be convinced, no matter what, to come back, uh, that it's an institutional problem and not just Mr. Prentice. That's it. I think that Mr. Prentice's strengths are not around that he's an outsider, because he's not. It's a, it's a bit of a strange claim. His strengths are that he's, an, he's a smart individual, he's worldly, he, uh, he's been around the block of government and, and knows the way things are done. He can make, he can make the big deals. I think that's his strength. I, I don't think that he's going to win people back on that the, the PC party is now the party of ethics. It's going to have to be that they're the party that can move on some of the big files around First Nations issues, energy, and access to markets. One of the first things, if you were the PC party and want to reestablish trust, accountability, would be to, I don't know, talk about your government's own fiscal situation in a way that makes sense to a lot of other people. We heard interim premier Dave Hancock in his speech before Prentice talk about how the Alberta government's in surplus, but there's a lot of people, and I think you guys are one of them, that if you count the numbers differently, no, you're not in surplus, you're in a big deficit position. Maybe Jim yeah. Prentice can appoint a new finance minister, Doug Horner's a guy now, and maybe it's time for a little honesty and accounting in the way the province's books are. Yeah, you know, uh, well, that was a very long speech from uh, from Mr. Hancock that lasted almost as long as this government's been in power. So I'm not, I think I, I, I breezed over that part. But, you know, it's a laughable claim. No one in Alberta who doesn't work for the government's political wing uh, believes that the government's actually balanced. They're actually going to be spending $3 billion more this year than they're going to bring in in revenue. And by Derek any Hildebrand, any definition. The Canadian Taxpayers Federation in Calgary. Thanks so much, Derek. Appreciate it. My pleasure. We're Thanks. We're going to go to Toronto now, and um, our Sun News contributor, Michael Diamond, has been standing by watching this particular race. And, Michael, I guess uh, let's put, try and put this in a little bit of a national perspective. You know, we started the evening with three progressive conservative parties in the country without a leader. Two of those parties are in government, the one here in Alberta, the one in Newfoundland and Labrador. And of course, Ontario is the other party that needs a leader as well. Alberta has found its answer, its answer in Jim Prentice. And the key thing that I'm taking away from the, the Prentice victory, every MLA endorsed him. The party is clearly, the, the clear consensus that Prentice wanted the leadership. That has got to be good news for progressive conservatives in this province. Well, you know, I think Jim Prentice is absolutely the right leader of the Progressive Conservative Party, but he's probably a bit too late, you know. Um, I just think the party is too far gone, they've been in power too long, and Jim Prentice probably would have not taken them to this point had he been leader to replace uh, Ed Stelmack or even Ralph Klein. But at this point, I just think it's uh, a bit too far. He's the right guy, probably, but uh, the party's just uh, in a lot of, a lot of trouble. If you're Danielle Smith in the Wild Rose Party, uh, knowing that the, Leger, the most recent polls have the Wild Rose more popular than the PCs, if you're Danielle Smith, do you want to start the campaign tomorrow to make sure that Prentice doesn't get any post-leadership bump? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're going to probably see that regardless of what the other party does, what the Wild Rose does, but uh, definitely want to be prepared for that. I think one thing they're going to have to keep in mind is still appearing to be mainstream and not 
the party that was presented to voters in 2012. They need to present a much more moderate and uh, modern uh, image to voters because their main, I don't think they have to worry about that 33% of the vote that Leger has them uh, uh, polling at. What they have to worry about is that 18% that uh, Raj Sherman and the Liberals are polling at uh, consolidating behind Jim Prentice and the Progressive Conservatives. So I think it's very important for the Wild Rose, whatever they do to brand Prentice, is not making them look extreme. They always will have to appear to be uh, sensible, moderate, and appealing to all Albertans so that Liberals will continue to be Liberals and not vote with their fears to stop them. Jim Prentice used the phrase, eventually there will be an election. He didn't say in 2016 when the fixed election date law in Alberta says there needs to be one. If you were Prentice and his team, would you try to get an election, a general election, say in the spring of next year? Absolutely. I'd uh, say he needs a mandate. I think it would be uh, good for him and, uh, uh, you know, catch the other guys off guard. They're going to prepare for that uh, event anyways. But I think uh, going sooner than later would make sense, possibly still within a bit of a uh, leadership, post-leadership uh, honeymoon period. Michael Diamond joining us from Toronto tonight, Sun News contributor. Michael, thank you so much for sticking with us all night long. Appreciate it. Thank you. So just before... We so just before we wrap up, let's just run over the results and what happened here tonight for those tuning in. A lo summer long leadership race, Jim Prentice, the outsider, versus two insiders, two members of Allison Redford's cabinet, Rick McIver and Tom Lukasik. The result, it wasn't even close. The PC party saying, please bring us someone outside the party to clean up the mess that Allison Redford left. That mess resulted, the guy who's going to clean up that mess won with 17,900 votes compared to 2,700 for McIver, 2,600 for Tom Lukasik. We'll see if Lukasik and McIver make it into Jim Prentice's cabinet. There's going to be some changes coming here in Alberta with Premier-designate Prentice.